What are your thoughts about the Bengals defeating the Ravens in the wild card re- weekend and advancing to the divisional round? I would say as a Joe Burrow fan, I'm definitely worried. Um, it wasn't a convincing game like I thought it would be. I mean, for the most part, I predicted out of you, me, and Charlie that this would be a lot closer than anticipated because of the offensive line. And I was right. Joe got sacked four times, pressured multiple times. I mean, he was hit five or six times as well. So he was constantly, you know, trying to escape the pocket, trying to create his own space and, you know, just feel comfortable, get into a rhythm. And he didn't have the worst game. He didn't have any turnovers. But again, it's just the sake of this is the point we've been making all season. Without an offensive line, you are not going to be able to move the football effectively. The run game was kind of like up and down. I mean, like Joe Mixon had what? He had 39 yards as a team. They had 51. That was terrible. I mean, 2.8 yards per carry. The Bengals were really unable to get it going on offense. And that is in big part because Baltimore's defense, led by Roquan Smith and others, were able to get in the backfield consistently. And that's because they were able to pressure. The offensive line was not able to, was not able to move at the line of scrimmage. I mean, again, it's just kind of a repetitive nature at this point for the Bengals. It's like they're doing really good, and then the offensive line takes a break. It's not necessarily a break when you lose, I believe, Kappa as well as Lyle Collins going into the postseason. So it definitely posed a, a worrisome uh, view for me to look out on the Bengals, especially facing the Bills next week. But I have to give credit where it's due, man. Baltimore pushed them to the brink of it. I mean, they, they, I mean Tyler Huntley, as, mu- as, much as, as much as people give him crap about not being Lamar Jackson, as much as people give him a lot of crap about not being the, the best backup, I mean, he played efficient football. He had almost 300 all-purpose yards between 54 on the ground, 226 in the air, two touchdowns. He had that one interception. But... A passer rating of 92, a QBR of 74. You can't really ask much more from your number two in a postseason matchup against a superior football team. So, again, like I said, I believe personally, and I've seen this on social media as well as between my friend group, if Lamar plays, I think the Bengals get exposed. I mean, the Bengals were not able to do much, and their defense outside of that 98-yard touchdown it really wasn't really able to slow down the consistency of Baltimore. I mean, Baltimore ran the ball for 155 yards. That's four and a half yards a carry. So when they needed to, they did what they needed to do. But I mean, I would say Cincinnati is in immediate, oh shit mode. Because I mean, they were not really able to get it going. Like I said, at a consistent enough clip for me to say, this is the Bengals of last year or superior. So as as I would say, you know, Joe Burrow looked great to an extent, but not to the liking of what he's looked like, what I want to say, the last, what, six or seven weeks when the Bengals have been on that win streak of theirs. But um, going into next week, it's going to be very, very competitive, especially since Buffalo struggled in their matchup as well, which we'll get into in a few minutes. But overall, I mean, the Bengals get the dub. That's all that matters, and they move on. Again, it's like Joe Burrow said, that championship window exists as long as he is going to be the quarterback of the Bengals. I think with this game, it was just a pretty typical AFC North battle. And Okay, we got we have to kind of put this in the context here. These two teams just played each other last week. So, both teams kind of knew each other going into this game pretty well. And I will say, I you know, for me personally, I thought that the Bengals were going to absolutely run away with this game. I just didn't think that the Ravens would, would really be able to score more than 10 to 15 points. And I mean, granted they scored 17, but they were competitive nonetheless. It's just to me, it came down to that one play on the goal line for the Ravens where Tyler Huntley tried to get across the pylon, fumble the ball, and then the Bengals run it back for a touchdown on a fumble recovery. If the Ravens don't have that play, if it's a touchdown instead of a fumble recovery, there's a chance that the Ravens could win that game. So when it comes to the Bengals in, in this instance, yeah, there's a little bit of cause of concern just because you got to a point where you're up 17 to 10, and then the defense just gets absolutely exposed by Demarcus Robinson, especially Eli Apple, who bit on what was kind of like a hitch and go, where Demarcus Robinson just absolutely burned him. And then the game's tied at 17 apiece. And then, you know, the Bengals have some opportunities to try to march down the field and get some points on the board. But that Ravens defense, give them credit. They shut down Joe Burrow and that Bengals offense to a pretty pedestrian second half. I mean, granted, they scored 15 points in the second half, but typically when we've seen the Bengals play this year, they're capable of putting big chunks of points, especially in the second half, and that just really didn't happen in this game. Now, I will say, when it comes to the Bengals, I think this is just kind of one of those games where 
they relied on their defense to get this win to a certain extent just because that was just the nature of the game. And, you know, fortunately for them, their defense stepped up and made that goal line stand. And then in the ensuing playoff, they were able to get a fumble and then run it back for a touchdown, which essentially was the game-winning touchdown. And I think going into next week, you know, they're going to have to focus on trying to get a little bit more consistency on the offensive side of the ball if they're going to be successful in, in the divisional round. But also the defense, I think, has to kind of play up to that same standard that they played against the Ravens this past weekend. Now, obviously, they're going to be presented with a much more difficult challenge than what they were faced with in Tyler Huntley. So they may have to make some adjustments and really try to get a effective pass rush going going into next week. But, I mean, when it comes to my overall stance of where the Bengals are right now, a win is a win. Uh, there's definitely going to be uh, some things they're going to look back and film and try to adjust going into next week. But if they play like they did against the Ravens this past week and going into that divisional round, there's a good chance that they could find themselves uh, outside of the playoffs uh, very soon just because I think when it comes to their effectiveness as a whole, it could be better. I think they probably know that too. I think this is just one of those games where it was a divisional game. It was kind of a grind and it kind of just played like that throughout the entirety of the game. So they still, they're still a good team. The, the Bengals are a team that could compete for a Super Bowl as far as I'm concerned. You know, a lot of these teams in the AFC could st still compete for a Super Bowl. But yeah, the, the Bengals definitely got away with it a little bit. Uh, their defense, I think, saved the game. And I think they're just going to have to fine-tune some things going into next week's game uh, if they're going to be competitive to try to make an AFC Championship berth uh, after next week.